Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us start this lecture with a thought process from NRE 4. When I cannot handle events, I left them handle themselves. So, if you look at in the last lecture, we basically discuss about the diffusion flame, various kinds of diffusion flame. Then we initiated discussion on the jet diffusion flame. In the process, we looked at the various structures of the jet diffusion flame. Uh, and Today, what we will be doing, we will be basically finding out an expression for flame height using the phenomenological analysis. <coughs> so, we are making this following assumption for this that we are saying this is the flow is laminar steady in viscid flow, right. And that is the things we are talking about. And uh, then the flame is diffusion control. That means, the uh, flame uh, will be basically governed by the how fast the fuel is diffused into the uh, quiescent atmosphere in the oxidizer uh, and uh, that will govern not the reaction rate. And uh, the V z remains constant along the H f which is not true. That means, the axial velocity remains constant along the flame height which would not be true, but however, we are doing it for the simplicity reason. And buoyancy effect is neglected, because if you look at this is the quiescent atmosphere and the uh, some amount of fuel is being burned and lot of amount of heat being released. As a result, there will be buoyancy effect apart from the momentum which will be coming uh, due to the jet. Uh, that is being neglected. And constant thermophysical properties, which we will be uh, using most of our analysis, not only for this, uh, otherwise we cannot really handle. Keep in mind that uh, in combustion process, generally the thermophysical uh, properties do change uh, with temperature, because temperature uh, change in case of a combustion is quite high. You cannot neglect it, but we are doing for a simplicity reason. So, um, we will have to now define a flame height, right. The flame height can be defined as a point along the axis, right, on which interdiffusion of fuel and oxidizer reach uh, on the flame surface for the first time. Of course, this definition is very limited. Uh, Let us say uh, this is the I have taken a little different. Uh, kind of thing configuration and uh, if you look at this definition what it says if there is a only fuel jet and you will get a uh, flame this is known as over ventilated flame right and this flame is uh, basically what is saying it is the height h f from here this distance to this distance right that is known as flame height and what is saying it is because if this is the fuel, fuel will be diffusing into that fuel and oxidizer will be coming that and it is not at the center line number 1. And then, then the flame will take place, it will go on at the center line, it will be uh, reached so that the fuel and oxidizer will be uh, at this height will be coming contact on this axis right and that is known as flame height. And this is a valid statement only for the over ventilated flame. If there is a under ventilated flame, this is the flame you know, this flame is under ventilated flame right, where the air is very very less amount right and then fuel is much higher. So, that flame will be getting into that, but that is very, uh, very rarely you will get unless you control. Natural flame will be always over ventilated flame. Are you getting natural jet diffusion flame? So, therefore, we will be using this definition H f 
and the what we need to know is basically the time required for oxidizer to reach the axis of the jet. If you look at this is my z axis, this is my r axis, the oxidizer is coming over here right, oxidizer and fuel is coming over this due to diffusion and it will be coming such that uh, it will be uh, reaching the axis of the jet because the time, what is the time required that we will have to look at and this is coming due to what? Due to only the diffusion, only the diffusion. That means the momentum we are not considering, right? It is only it is as if it is diffusing and then it is coming. So, then we can say that this time whatever is required is nothing but your Hf divided by Vj. That is a one way of looking at because it is having certain momentum, right? And which is having a velocity Vz in, at this point, this we are saying it is a uniform velocity and that is Vz, right? And the if I uh, already uh, assume that Vz is not changing along the z direction along the flame. So, therefore, we can say that time required for the uh, fuel to reach this height will be basically governed by the Vz. That means, Hf divided by Vz is nothing but your T time required and that is the fuel to reach, but the oxidizer to reach, oxidizer to reach will be by the diffusion right. So, by this Einstein diffusion equation, we can have this uh, r uh, dash square is equal to 2 d 1 2 t, t is the again time required for that is uh, and d 1 2 is the diffusivity, this is the molecular diffusivity, right. <coughs> and R dash is basically average and this is average square displacement due to molecular diffusion. And uh, I have already told you this is basically diffusive between well and oxidizer right <coughs> 1 2 one can say fuel. So, then I can write down uh, if I will just use maybe this is equation 1 and this is equation 2. If I combine this together what I can write down is H f is nothing but your uh, T into V z and T is nothing but your R uh, square divided by 2 d 1 and this r the distance which is covered if you look at is basically this is your 2 r right. So, that means from here to this, this distance is nothing but your r. So, this r dash uh, square is nothing but your capital R square right in this case. So, therefore, you will get h f is equal to v z r square by 2 d 1 2. And uh, if you uh, look at that I can I can say that this H f is basically depends on what? It depends on the V z that means, if V z is higher then uh, flame height will be higher and it will be dependent also the diameter. If diameter is more right or the radius or the diameter like it will be also dependent on that and the diffusivity is higher the H f will be smaller right. If it is a lower then flame length will be lower. So, that you can uh, think of, but uh, let me look at it some other uh, aspect of that. I can write down that V z pi r square right. I can write down divided by 2 d 1 2 by pi. I can this this is this portion this is nothing but your volumetric flow rate. V z is the velocity into area that will give the volumetric flow rate by 2 d 1 2 pi right. And this is is basically volumetric flow rate. And uh, if I 
write down this one is basically in terms of density you know like you can say mass flow rate I can say write down H f is basically I can say density of the uh, fuel I can say this one because this is the fuel flow rate right f into uh, v dot divided by 2 pi rho d 1 2 and this is nothing but your mass flow rate of fuel divided by 2 pi rho f d 1 2. What is saying uh, is that basically um, it is a independent of the diameter rather the H f is a function of it is a function of flow rate and it is independent of Bernard diameter per particular uh, volumetric flow rate or the mass flow rate right. <coughs> and keep in mind that if I will take L e is equal to 1 that means alpha is equal to d k by rho c p is equal to d. So, I can write down basically uh, k by c p is equal to rho d in place of this I can write down f by 2 pi uh, k I can say this is basically k g I can write down k g gas uh, by c p right. So, this you can also see that these are the properties which is uh, basically do not change much this k g uh, this k g by c p would not change much uh, with um, at the uh, various temperature kind of things would not change much. So, therefore, h a p is basically uh, proportional to the uh, flow rate of the fuel and we keep in mind that we are not talking about the coaxial jet we are talking about the single jet in this case right. And uh, the H f is uh, as I told for a fixed value of uh, the mass flow rate and H f is independent of the pressure right ok. Because if I say this thing because k g and c p would not be depending much on uh, with pressure right because whereas the diffusivity is changing. So, therefore, you will find H f is uh, not really very much depending too much on the pressure flame length. So, uh, let us look at how uh, this will be having this is the H f this is from the experimental data and uh, you can see that uh, I mean Reynolds number it is being put because of fact that you can see this R e is equal to rho v z uh, d by mu d in this case is 2 r diameter of the diameter of tube. And in this case this is basically fuel and this is fuel are you getting this is the basically I can say fuel number of uh, R e f. What you can see uh, as H f is uh, basically increases with increase in Reynolds number right that we have already seen that means a H f we have already seen it is basically depends on uh, flow rate that is H f is equal to uh, V z by uh, R square to D 1 2. So, H f by the uh, goes by the V z. So, it is increasing right and that is true for of course, for laminar flame height uh, or the laminar regime it is true, but uh, in the transition regime what is happening here you can observe that the flame length is uh, basically will be start decreasing right. But however, uh, the this portion this line is indicating is uh, basically the onset of turbulence like if I 
draw here a which is not there but if I draw a flame length here something like this then what happened this region is turbulent or a little bit lamp, transition means in a combination of laminar or turbulent kind of a, or onset of turbulent right and here uh, then what is happening the flame length is remaining almost constant with the increase in laminar particularly for uh, beyond this um, transition regime right beyond this uh, transition regime it is remaining almost constant but however there will be also the envelope breaking point that breaking point means where this portion the flame will be turbulent in nature right there will be the flame brass will be coming you know as i showed you in the premix flame it will be uh, randomly moving the flame surfaces right and that will be coming here as, as you increase this Reynolds number it is uh, goes on decreasing this point like for example it started doing here only in the tips right but in the transition but as it is goes then what will happen it will be goes on decreasing which i have not shown another flame maybe here is very very less and it will be goes on changing and it is remaining constant almost because only the smaller portion nearby the uh, jet uh, inlet uh, of the orifice of the jet right that there will be lamina rest of the thing will be turbulent <coughs> So, the, this increase in flame height is observed until the turbulent mixing occurs and this situation occurs at the flame tip because uh, this will start the turbulent you know will be uh, start occurring to dominate a player role particularly in flame tip moves downward as the velocity increases that is moving downwards right. And the position of transition from laminar turbulent is called the break break points right where the laminar because this is laminar right. Uh, laminar and these are the turbulent right and that position like this position this is the one position this is the point these are the break 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 point and break point remain constant beyond certain velocity or beyond certain Reynolds number right that is basically uh, Reynolds number right kind of things. So, <coughs> And transition Reynolds number is different for different fuels that you should keep in mind. It's not same for all. Like uh, your pipe flow, if you look at pipe flow generally, turbulent means, or the that is Reynolds number will be what? Huh? What will be Reynolds number? Uh, two thousand uh, two hundred, right? But whereas in this case, the transition this thing will be will be changing right. Uh -huh. So, uh, if you look at this uh, fuel air, if you look at transition Reynolds number for acetylene is uh, basically 9500 and propane it is 9500 and whereas the coal gas 3500. Basically, if you look at coal gas sometimes is known as, as the town gas, earlier days people were using like using the coal convert the solid coal into gas and then using in the town uh, particularly in England and in other places not in India 3500 carbon dioxide uh, monoxide is 4800 4, hydrogen is 2000 you know it is a near to a pipe flow. So, this is the kind of things what it would be uh, you see and keep in mind this uh, this fully developed uh, turbulent flame is uh, basically uh, very noisy and also less sooty as compared to the laminar flames. Laminar flames are more sooty. But if you look at, uh, let us uh, look at little analysis and to show that whether this you can capture this phenomena of uh, the flame uh, height is remaining constant. So, uh, uh, if you uh, look at the HF, right. Um, is um, we have already seen that HF is uh, basically Vj r square by uh, diffusivity and uh, the diffusivity uh, d 1 2 like uh, if you uh, it can be used uh, replace because we have seen that HF 
in case of laminar flame we have seen is uh, proportional to V z right R square by 2 diffusivity right D 1 2. This is case of laminar right laminar flame, but uh, we will be using similar thing and then trying to replace this diffusivity, diffusivity is replaced by nu t, nu t is the turbulent flow right, nu t means the it is basically uh, eddy diffusivity and this is known as the eddy diffusivity right. Uh, basically A D diffusivity and this A D diffusivity we know is basically is uh, equal to length scale like uh, integral length scale and uh, V dash R M S right and which is uh, proportional to you can say that uh, this length scale will be proportional to what r right i can say the l is proportional to r right and v rms is proportional to vz average right now uh, if you look at I can write down this as basically uh, that means is V t is proportional to uh, R and V z. So, H f I can write down for turbulent flow H f I can write down as V z R square by uh, nu t is equal to I can say this is constant right is equal to uh, this is by R V z and this is I can say this is a constant C t and V z by R square right. So, this will cancel it out. I can say this is average, this is cancel it out and you can find out that this is nothing but R that means H f I can write down H f is equal to C t by R for turbulent flow right for length flow that means H f is not really depending on the velocity it is uh, because if the diameter is remaining constant for the experiment you can see that h f is remaining constant that means it is not dependent on the Reynolds number. What I am trying to say these are the experimental data right these are all experimental data right and by using a very simple phenomenological analysis you can get a, you know you can explain this variation very using very simple uh, phenomenological analysis that is the thing you must appreciate ok fine. Then what is CT? CT is a constant right because this is I have taking the proportional na, right. So, naturally you will have to take a constant CT is basically a constant it can be any constant which will be uh, from you want to match the experimental value and put some constant then try to match you know that way. What I am trying to say that H f is independent of Reynolds number that is the point I am raising H f is independent of Reynolds number that is the point what I am trying to say. So, let us uh, look at like what are the jet diffusion flame what are the things we can see like uh, if it is the flame here which is the turbulent of course, the jet diffusion flame this is uh, turbulent this is the V z velocity I can say V z which is increasing 
right vj means at inlet at inlet so you will find a flame and when you increase this flame what will happen flame is lifted this is a lifted flame and this height is known as hl lifted height right this is lifted hl lifted height flame height and this is the flame height okay as you are increasing this may oscillate go up and then you know the blue color regions are on increasing and when you go beyond certain velocity what will happen flame will be very very small it will go up and then after that blow out will occur okay that means this portion will be reduced and some kind of thing it is i, I have not shown we have conducted some experiment earlier so that is the things what i can say <coughs> now if you put this h a by d and put this data in terms of froud number froud number is basically uh, the ratio of initial jet moment into buoyancy forces and this is froud number which is non dimensional number you can see these are the experimental data is being plot and which is varying hf is varying with the froud number and after that it is remaining constant and this portion where it is remaining constant is known as momentum dominated that means here it is not affected by the buoyancy and this will occur only when the v is very high right and or rather the froud number will be very high and v will be very high and d will be small right kind of things that where momentum dominated will be uh, flame will be saying that flame height won't be changing much even though you are increasing the uh, froud number or the velocity right so with this we'll stop over and in the next lecture we'll be uh, discussing about uh, basically how to analyze the jet diffusion flame in a little more rigorous way okay fine thank you very much